Shri Padmini Maharaj and myself and several other devotees have been uh, working on uh, Srila Gurudev's lecture on uh, Gopi Ki, which he gave in the early 90s. So there, uh, Srila Gurudev quotes, oh, and I should have known it. Uh, Gurudev quotes um, Srila Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, and this is also true for Srila Jiva Goswami, who are, uh, by their mercy, they gave us commentary uh, of Gopi Ki and Shiva Gurudev is further explaining these commentaries. So there, both of these acharyas say that without the mercy of the gopis, who actually took part in the Rasalila, there's no question of understanding anything about any of their activities in Krishna. And that's true for any of uh, any of the subject matters of scripture. So the Vishwanathakvari Thakur in fact begins his commentary by first offering obeisances to uh, Shumasanatha Goswami, Shula Jiva Goswami, Sridhar Swami, who were the uh, earlier commentators of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Raj Panchajai, as Shiva uh, Gurudev mentioned last night, and Gopiji. He's offering obeisances to them because in their siddha form, in their form um, in Krishna Lila, they are those very gopis who partook in Rasa Lila with Krishna. So he's offering uh, obeisances and prayers to all of our charges, to an art and dhanitas work, Sri uh, Saroop Yamadar, Rai Ramananda, everybody, all of our previous charges, so that he may be able to uh, explain Gopiji. And Sri Jiva Goswami also prays in the beginning of his commentary that may those Maiden, be merciful to me, because I'm trying to explain something that only Krishna can understand. Because the gopis are saying gopi to Krishna, and he understood what they meant. Hello. When Krishna ordered Uda to go to Vrindavan and give his message to the gopis, Srila Gurudev explained that Uruk had his own idea of what the message meant. But because he wasn't given the full mercy of Krishna to understand Krishna's heartfelt feelings to the gopis, he only understood to a certain extent and in his own way. But the gopis understood something entirely different. Similarly, Srila Sukadeva Goswami reports on the gopis' words and they're quite impenetrable. So therefore, our acharyas explain by their mercy the meaning. And then to understand the meanings of the acharyas, Srila Gurudev gave so many lectures and he's explaining in so many classes and expanding, taking the compressed cotton and fluffing it out for our understanding. And still, without his mercy, although we have so many words from him and we say, yeah, I get it now. Now I understand what um, Srila Chakravarti Thakur is saying because Gurudev is expanding it. What Srila Chakravarti Thakur says in one sentence, Srila Gurudev explains in two pages worth of discussion. So, still, even though I'm hearing the words of Gurudev and they sound, yeah, now I understand it. Still, we don't have even the slightest clue of what he's saying. When I first met Gurudev in 1992, um, 
he said, I said to him that, you know, I'm preaching all over the world for our Srila Prabhupada and I have intellectual understanding of what I'm saying but I have no real experience or realization. So I thought that Gurudev was going to say intellectual understanding is not everything which I already was saying to him. But instead he said intellectual understanding is no understanding. And then he said just like if I'm reading or hearing that Radha and Krishna are walking through the forest of Vrindavan together, then what will I necessarily think? Oh right, I used to have a boyfriend or girlfriend and we used to walk through the forest. Right, I get it. But actually we have no idea. Somebody asked Srila Prabhupada, does it rain in Goloka Vrindavan? And Prabhupada replied, if I tell you that it rains, still you won't have any idea of the rain in Vrindavan. If I try to explain what a jackfruit is to somebody who's never tasted or seen a jackfruit, what will you understand? A jackfruit looks like a punched-in basketball. It has the um, it has the uh, texture and sort of look of an alligator, and it uh, kind of looks like a man who hasn't shaved in a few days. And then when you open it up inside, it kind of has the consistency of um, something gooey, and it tastes kind of like a cross between a potato and an apple. Does that help? Now, I have realization of jackfruit, which I've seen it and I've tasted it. But because I have realization and I'm speaking to you, can you understand? No. Or take, let's take uh, rasagula. Prabhupada gave the example of the jackfruit and Gurudev of the rasagula. Rasagula is about, about the size of a ping pong ball. And it uh, has the consistency of a sponge. It trips on the sides of the mouth. And it's kind of like a cross between a honey and an apple. Does that help if you haven't tasted a rasagula? So realization means taste. Prabhupada said that before he came to America, that is 1965 he came to America. And before that time, he had been reading about America. In America, it snows. And he was telling all of his friends, in America, it snows. But then when he came to America and experienced the first winter, he came in September, and then very soon winter came, when, you know, in New York, uh, it gets knee deep. And then he understood, understood he said, in America, it snows. He knew what snow was, and that's called realization. So without mercy, the experience of it, the taste of it, isn't there, and without taste, one only has an intellectual appreciation, which is no real appreciation. But we begin somewhere by hearing and having at least some intellectual understanding, and from there we pray for the real understanding. And simultaneously show uh, Sri Guru and Vaishnavas and all of our predecessor Acharyas and back to um, the six Goswamis, Mahaprabhu and his associates, Radha Krishna and their associates, that we really want their mercy. We pray for it as Srila Gurudev and we've heard Srila Prabhupada also praying up to the siblings' succession before giving any class. For that same reason, just like Srila Vishwanath Chakrabari Thakur prays at the beginning of his commentary on Srila Jiva Goswami. That, and Sri Sukadeva Goswami also, I believe it's in the fourth chapter of First Canto, when Maharaj Brikit asks his so many questions, 
Sukadeva Goswami begins by giving practically a whole chapter of prayers to the Lord. And each prayer ends with, please decorate my statement. Please let me be just a mouthpiece and let your real mercy come through me and that way I'll also get your mercy. So here, uh, Lord Narayan, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, is telling Lord Brahma, Naya Mama Pravachanena Lagva. There's that other verse that Gurudev very, very often quotes that no one can understand anything about the Lord, even if he's the greatest lecturer. In fact, um, way, way back in the early 90s, uh, in one of his Kartik lectures, Gurudev said, even if the person who gives the greatest lecture could be in the worst maya. So even if one gives great lectures, even if he's hearing lectures all the time, and um, even if he can give great explanations, even if he's hearing, even if he has a very, very big intelligence, medha, namedaya, even if you have the greatest intelligence, that won't do it. To um, understand the Lord. How can we understand who he chooses to bestow his mercy upon that person can understand. So here the Lord instructed Lord Brahma, Papa, Papa, do austerities and within his heart he received the proper guidance how to do the austerities. He performed the austerities and then the Lord became very pleased with him. He revealed Vaikuntha to him. Lord Brahma saw the palaces of Vaikuntha. He saw the um, Vaikuntha airplanes with the uh, Lakshmi, uh, the, the residents of Vaikuntha and their wives. He saw Lakshmi. He saw all the um, trees, the opulences of the Lord personified serving him. Just like here in this material world, there is six opulences. Beauty, wealth, strength, fame, knowledge, and renunciation. So, there are also um, powers or sreeds, mystic powers. Like one can become uh, smaller than an atom, heavier than the universe. He can bring others under his control. Um, and then there are spiritual powers. So, all of these are personified as attendants to the Supreme Lord in Vaikuntha, in what to speak of in Goloka Vrindavan. And they're all serving him, on tr- with tr- bringing trays of paraphernalia, fanning him. And Lord Brahma saw all this, and the Lord even shook his hand. So by his austerity, because of the Lord's pleasure, he got so much mercy. And then the Lord is speaking to him, as uh, the first verse that Gurudev quoted last night. Let's see if I can have it here. He first says to Brahma, Now I wish you all luck, all good luck. Good luck means Krishna's mercy. Bad luck is also Krishna's mercy because it shows us that we need Krishna's mercy to be really lucky. And it helps us to understand I'm not as great as I thought I was. I'm not, I'm not as clever as I thought I was. And I'm not as happy as I thought I would be by getting what I got. So I wish you good luck, O Brahma. You may ask for me, the giver of all benedictions, all that you may desire, this is the peace formula, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, to understand anyone who knows that I am the uh, bestower of all benedictions. I am the um, person to whom all sacrifices should be performed. I am the Lord of all planetary systems. And I am the friend, the only friend, of all living beings. 
Prabhupada explains that everybody is looking for someone to be his friend. Who can understand how nice I am? I expected that person to understand, but they didn't get it. And who can understand the volume of my suffering? But only Krishna can understand that. And Krishna's manifestation, who includes Sri Guru. So you could ask me for anything you desire. You may know that the ultimate benediction as the result of your penance is to see me by realization. That's the ultimate thing you should want. You should know that I am the one who ordered you to do the penance and will see in the, these Shatra Shloki verses how it could only have been Krishna who ordered him to do the penances. And then he says, I create the cosmos by such penances. I maintain it by the same energy and I withdraw it by the same energy. Therefore, the potential power is penance only. And Srimati Radhika he explains here and elsewhere. Shimati Radhika, the internal potency, is the essence of the penance. So the highest penance, the best penance, is uh, serving under his guidance and uh, preaching his mission, that guru who can give the highest benediction, and at the same time, uh, the most difficult thing, it's easy to, uh, comparatively easy, although for me it's torturous to make a painting. I can't imagine anything harder in this world. But that's so easy in comparison to the real, most hardest penance of doing bhajan, of weeping, and praying in the mood of Shila Raghunath Das Goswami, Shila Rupa Goswami. And that penance, accompanied with the uh, service and spreading the mission, that penance, because serving and spreading the mission gives us the uh, sukritis and shows and gets the pleasure of Guru so that we can do the bhajan. And by the bhajan, by that penance, we get the highest uh, seeing of Krishna. As Krishna says, the result of penance is to see me by realization. The highest penance gives the highest result, which is to see Krishna in his most complete form, which is Krishna serving Srimati Radhika. So where is that first verse? Yeah, the one of uh, Param Spiritus. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Jnanam Paramam Guyam Me Yad Vijnanam Samanditam Sarahasyam Tarangam Cha Grahana Guritam Maya And the meaning? The Personality of God had said, Knowledge about me, as described in the scriptures, is very confidential, paramam guhuyam. And it is to be realized in conjunction with devotional service. The necessary paraphernalia for that process is being explained by me, so you may take it up carefully. Brahma's desire, and so Krishna is responding to Brahma's prayer, that now I have to do this very, very, um, on one hand, very arduous task of creating everything in the universe. All the um, sages, including Narada, including Lord Shiva, four Kumaras, including the Varnas and the Ashrams, including uh, I have to manifest the Vedas from my four mouths 
Then all the things like the oceans, the minor things like oceans, darkness, evil, the demigods, everything. So on one hand, arduous task, but on the other hand, very glorious task, which could easily make me get puffed up, because I've done it all. There was nothing there, and I sat on the lotus, and I gave everybody their bodies and so many things. So please let me create, the, please, in the creation, as I'm creating the universe, please let me do it in such a way that I won't be proud and puffed up and thinking that I'm the doer. And if I can do it in that way, that I'm not thinking that I'm the doer, then what will happen, and this is what I really want in my creation, then anybody who sees anything in my creation that will remind them of you. In fact, once I asked Gurudev, you talk about bhajan, bhajan, bhajan. What exactly is bhajan? So Gurudev said, when you see anything that will remind you of Krishna, you see the water, any water, it reminds you of Jamuna but not only intellectually, but factually. Like when, when Mahaprabhu was uh, riding on the boat, he thought, oh, there's the Jamuna, and Krishna's playing with the gopis in the Jamuna, and he jumped in. So, bhajan means full absorption in the object of worship, so that anything, any thought of anything, reminds one of that. If Radharani sees a tamal tree, then she thinks, oh, here's Krishna, and she embraces the tamal tree. If she happens to be in Man, and she sees a cloud, she doesn't, she's already in Man, she's angry, but she doesn't say, oh, cloud. She says, oh, Krishna, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You can go back where you came from. You can go back to Chandravali, Kunch. And if she sees a tamal tree, with a bunch of yellow flowers growing up the bottom of the tree, she'll think there's Krishna with his yellow dhoti. And she'll, if she's in mind, she'll say, I'm so angry I could crush you into powder. Or if she's just feeling separation, then she may embrace that tree. And if she sees Krishna, then she thinks, oh, She's in so much madness of separation that she'll think, oh, this is a tree. And she'll start to glorify Krishna, that, oh, tree, you remind me of Krishna because you're blackish, you look like a sapphire. So everything of somebody absorbed in bhajan reminds them in full absorption. This is called avesh. Avesh means identification by absorption. Like Gurudev explained, right now we all have a vesh in this body. But in bhajan, we have a vesh in uh, Srimati Radhika in one way, and Sri Rupa Manjari in another way. We identify, want, make our heart one with our uh, worshipful deity. So now I'm going to tell you the process that you can, by which you can realize me. So now listen carefully. Remember Gurudev said last night, I'm going to tell you something very confidential, so listen carefully. So he begins. So he says, first of all, this, is, this verse is the next verse, but it's not yet the chapter shloki. All of me, namely my actual eternal form and my transcendental existence, color, qualities, and activities, let it all be awakened within you by factual realization, by my causeless mercy. So now we begin the Chatra Shloki. Aham eva sameva gre nanyad yat sarasat param paschadaham yade tatscha yo vyasi yeta sosnyaham. And the meaning is Brahma. It is I, the personality of Godhead, who is existing before the creation, when there was nothing. 
Just like I may do a painting, and I take a brush from the store, and I take the colors, there's red, there's yellow, there's green, and I mix it all up, and it becomes brown. But when Krishna's creating something, he doesn't have anything to work with. He makes everything from his own imagination. So, O oh Brahma, it is I, the personality of Godhead, who is existing before the creation, when there was nothing but myself. Nor was there the material nature. This similar prayer was also offered by Devaki, when Krishna first came out of her womb, appeared, not exactly came out of her womb, but appeared as Lord Vishnu. First he was Vishnu in her womb and then he manifested out. And she said, now I understand by seeing you that only you were existing and from you comes everything else. The whole uh, universe comes from your abdomen. Isn't it wonderful that you came from my abdomen when everything in existence comes from your abdomen? So Krishna is saying here, know that I, the personality of Godhead, existed before the creation when there was nothing but I. And this is tested at every moment. If something goes wrong, am I going to look for somebody to blame or am I going to follow this verse? In fact, this morning, I was looking for this book. and. I couldn't find it in any of our suitcases. So I went on the computer and I pressed folio and I pressed second chance of ninth chapter and I found the verses there and I was looking. But I was thinking, I really want this book, the actual physical book, because I may want to read it in the class. So none of the suitcases have the book. And there's one suitcase that's locked so I can't get in there. So Vasanti has the combination to the to the suitcase and she's not here. She's probably at the temple. So I have two choices. Either I can become angry at Vasanti for leaving me with leaving me without a book, or I could follow these verses and thus achieve the result. So we'll go over what these verses are. And, where there's nothing but myself before the creation, nor was there the material nature, the cause of the creation, that is, for Don, material nature we see uh, in the third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, how Lord, um, Lord Vishnu, Mahavishnu, glances over the material nature. When I was doing the painting, Prabhupada said to make it like a cloudy Durga. She is the personified material nature and make it cloudy so that it's like the Pradhan, the unmanifested material nature. The Lord glances over that material nature and then from his glance comes a stumbling, the reflection of his glance, that is Lord Shiva, in the form of a linga. And he unites with Durga and so all the jivas come out and the material elements come out, the bodies come out of the living beings. So that which you see now, whatever you see in creation, we see these flags, we see the roof, we see the devotees, we see the rugs, whatever you see now in creation is also I, the personality of Godhead. And after annihilation, what remains is also I, the personality of Godhead. So it's not that uh, we take it in an impersonal way, that everything is Krishna, so everything I do, whether it's good or bad, is all Krishna. And I can uh, offer my obeisances to the rug because that's also Krishna. But how everything is Krishna, and how we become one with Krishna, and how we are one with Krishna, that's a great science that we learn from our the mercy of our Acharyas, from Krishna through our Acharyas and from the immediate Acharya, 
Power Shri Guru. Then in the next verse he says, and this is the verse that Gurudev quoted last night. Pratertam yat pratiyeta na pratiyeta chatmani tadvidyadatmano na mayam yatabhasho yatatamaha O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, it has no reality. It may appear to have some value, but if you see it without a relation to me, then that thing has no reality. Know it as my illusory energy, that reflection which appears in the darkness. Sometimes in the darkness we think we're seeing something, but there's really nothing there. So this whole material world, even though it looks so sunny out, and the ocean water is so refreshing, when I try to enjoy, only suffering comes. I was once sitting on the beach with Prabhupada in 1968 or so, 67, because Prabhupada was doing his Naralila pastime of a heart attack. And we know from the Chaitanya Charitamrita that he does this uh, the Acharya will do this in order to bring out the love of and um, increased service of the disciple, but actually uh, Sri Guru is never touched by matter, so he never really can be an invalid. So Prabhupada did this pastime of having a heart attack, and then he went to the hospital and we visited him there, and then um, he convalesced in a very nice house in New Jersey which was right on the beach. And two of us every day went to visit him. So I was, I went one day and we all went with Prabhupada to sit on the beach on a big uh, blanket. And we were looking out at the ocean. And there was some, uh, some boys uh, in those, you know, black skin suits and surfing. So, uh, Prabhupada said, um, the boys think this is going to be Ananda, but at any moment a big wave can come and the boys will suffer or drown. So there is some Ananda here in this world because it's a perverted reflection of the reality, the spiritual world, with spiritual water. And he said, and we can't conceive of it, but even the water there is fully conscious of Krishna. So he said, this world has some ananda because it's a perverted reflection of the real world, but you can't taste any ananda here. Because, just like you have sweet rice, which is a very anandamoy thing, very full of pleasure thing, but if that sweet rice was mixed with sand, we couldn't taste the pleasure of the sweet rice. So that's how this world is. So, O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, it has no reality. Know it as my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in the darkness. And then the uh, third of the Chatur Shloki, Bhagavatam, which Gurudev said all the rest of the many, many thousands of verses of Srimad Bhagavatam came from this essence. These are the nutshell, the four nutshell verses, Prabhupada called them, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yitha mahanti bhutani bhute su chavachesvanu pravishtanya pravishtani tathateshu very poetic. O oh Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time 
do not enter into it. I'll repeat that. It's quite complex. Please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos. Universal elements means earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. And at the same time, they do not enter into the cosmos. For example, our body is made of earth, water, fire, air, and ether, and then the subtle body of mind, intelligence, and false ego. The ocean is also made of those things, and uh, the building is also made of those things. So although we can't see this rug as a clump of earth, or this body as a clump of earth and water and fire, because these elements have entered into all the cosmic, cosmos forms, at the same time, they haven't entered into it. That is, earth still remains what it is. Water still, re still retains its identity. So, O oh Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos, and at the same time, do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created, and at the same time, I exist outside of everything. This is also stated in Sri Isopanishad. The Supreme Lord is uh, far, far away. He's very near to all. He's inside everything, and at the same time, he's outside of everything. In the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that um, all the creation comes from me, I am within it, and yet I'm independent from it. Just as the, uh, all the air and all the planets and all the universes are existing within space, everything is existing within Krishna. But yet, he's outside of everything. He's independent. He has his own identity. Srila Prabhupada once gave the analogy back in the 60s that if I take a piece of paper and I <laughs> rip the piece of paper into millions of little pieces and throw them up in the air, the whole piece, the whole paper is gone. But, om purna mada purna midam. Krishna creates all innumerable universes and innumerable spiritual planets called Vaikuntha planets. And still, he remains the complete balance. Still, he's the complete whole Krishna. Innumerable incarnations come out of Krishna. Ram, Nishinga, Varaha, Kurma, innumerable. And still, even though they come out, still, they're within him. Still he's complete and he's the individual, Sri Krishna. Gurudev explained that Krishna um, lends a piece of his name, a piece of his form, a piece of his qualities to other incarnations like Baladev, Anantashesh, Ram. Ram has the same name as the original Ram but not in full. A piece of that Ram became that Ram. A piece of that Ram became Parsaram. A big piece of that Ram became Balaram. But the original Ram is Radha Ram Raman, that Ram, Hari Ram, Radha Raman. Similarly Ananta, similarly Nishinga, similarly Matya. All the qualities of Matya, the fish, and the Shinga, the half lion, half man, are all within Prajnananda and Shamsundar to the fullest degree. And that name also belongs to uh, Prajnananda and Shamsundar. And that form of the fish in its fullest extent is in Prajnananda and Shamsundar and the qualities. And this is explained by Lalita Devi in her uh, Hamsadutta, her speaking to a swan to go to Mathura and give Krishna the message from the gopis. 
just like um, in our Mangala Sharana, in our songbook, the beginning is Mangala Sharana, and one of the prayers to Lord Nishinga Dave, uh, Bhagi Sha Yashivarami, Lakshmi Yashya, Nabakshise, uh, Yashaste, huh? Yesha Yesha Hridaye Samvit Tam Nishinga Ahambaje. He who is who is Saraswati, Shri Saraswati sits on his tongue, and Lakshmi plays on his chest, and in his heart is love for all his devotees. That Nishinga I worship. So without explaining that too much, we can understand that. The original Nishringa, on whose tongue the original Shiddha Saraswati, Srimati Radhika, plays, and on whose chest the original Lakshmi plays, and who gives him all of his affection that he can have for all of his devotees, that original Vladini Shakti, Radha. That is the original Brajendra Nandan Shamasindar Nishringa Dev. So Krishna is telling Brahma that please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. This is true of Garbhadakshai Vishnu and in the ultimate issue it's true of Brajendranandan Shamasandha. Then the final of the four Shatra Shloki four Shlok Bhagavatam which is the essence of the Bhagavatam and as Srila Gurudev said the essence of uh, the original four Vedas I hope I can repeat this right, because last night was the first time I heard it. There are there was one Veda originally, and Srila Vyasa, in order to make it easier to understand, he divided the Vedas into four. And those four Vedas are the um Rig Veda, Sama Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, and Atarva Veda. The first verse of each of those Vedas, if we take the essence of the first verse of each of those Vedas, which later on expanded into the Upanishads, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, of which Gita is the essence, and ultimately the essence of all that, the Srimad Bhagavatam. So the essence of the first verse of each of those four Vedas is the uh, verses of this Chapter Shloki Bhagavatam. I hope someone corrects me if I'm wrong. Uh, the the Rig Veda, the first verse of the Rig Veda is the first verse of the Chapter Shloki Bhagavatam. The first verse of the Sama Veda is the second. The first verse of the Yajur Veda is the third, and the first verse of the Akarva Veda is the fourth. But somebody can third and Yajur Veda is the fourth. Thank you. Uh-huh. I, 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 I understood that the essence of being for those Vedas and necessarily the first verse of each one would be, you know, the essence of the Rig Veda was one of those books. The essence of the first verse. Yeah, that's, I think that's what most of us got. But um, whenever there's a, we could ask your date and also, um, I mean, of course that's the best thing. And we also, you what? I also Okay, let's ask. And whenever we do a Hari Kata, if anything is up for confusion, we always write and ask. But let's do ask because it's important to know. <laughs> okay.
But it would be the essence anyway. <laughs> okay, then the fourth of the chapter Shloki verses. Eta vadeva jigyasyam tatva jigyasyanatmana anvaya vyati rekyabhyam vyatsyat sarvatsasarvada A person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it up to this. Up to, up to this colon. It doesn't say colon. But up to this. How far? Oh, by the way, how far does this class go? To what time? Okay. Okay. It's quarter two? Okay. So a person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it up to this. How far? In all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. This is very interesting, this Anvaya Gati Reikya Abhyam, direct and indirect. Srila Bhaktivinoda uh, Thakur discusses this verse in relation to um, the process of advancing in Krishna consciousness. That is, there's direct and indirect process of bhakti in terms of doing all activities, this is direct, doing all activities that are favorable to the advancement of bhakti and the indirect means, in this connection, giving up everything that's unfavorable for bhakti. Don't go to a movie. That's an endeavor in itself. That's an activity to not go. Don't watch TV. Don't smoke. Don't eat anything that's not offered to Krishna. In fact, even when you're taking prasadam, don't eat prasadam. Don't think, I'm eating prasadam, but rather I'm honoring prasadam or serving prasadam. Even if I haven't realized that, that what is prasadam? Prasadam is actually the utter amrita of Krishna, the nectar from the lotus mouth of Krishna. The same nectar, the same mouth that speaks Bhagavad Gita, the same mouth that uh, speaks to the gopis, the same mouth that plays the flute, the same mouth that kisses the gopis, is the same mouth the nectar from which is the Mahaprasadam. So, a rustic devotee will realize that, Gurudev explained, but we, although we're conditioned souls, we should think it and not think that I'm eating this food or as Prabhupada said, not think that it's hotel food, but offer prayers. That's why we have so many prayers and that's why after saying the Sarira Avitajal prayer and after the um, Mahabhishati Govinde prayer, we again pray to the Acharyas, Kijai, uh, and up to Srila Bhakti and Otaku, Kijai and then Mahaprasad, Bhagavad Mahaprasad, Seva Kijai, because we're begging their mercy, just as our Acharyas teach to beg for mercy when I'm going to speak some Harikata or when I'm going to write a commentary of uh, from Shastra begging mercy simply for taking the shadam. We also pray so many prayers that we can appreciate the Pishadam as it is. What was that new thing about Mahapishadam, Santi? Mm-hmm. Oh yes. When when Gurudev was giving this class about Mahaprasadam being the utter amrita, or the nectar from Krishna's mouth. Um, 
Then he offered the devotees prasadam. And then after the prasadam, after they took prasadam, then Gurudev again was going to speak from the Acharya's commentary. So he said, we wash our hands after taking prasadam before we touch the Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Because Srimad Bhagavatam is Bhagavad Sarup. It's actually the uh, form and personality of Krishna himself. Then he said, in fact, Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, Rasaraj Mahabhav. It's the combined form of uh, Rajendra Nandan Shamsundar in his loving relationship with Mahabhav Swarupini Shimati Radhika. He said, so therefore, we wash our hands after taking Tushadam, after honoring Tushadam, before we touch the Bhagavatam. But actually, do we really have to do that? No. In the ultimate issue, no. Because Mahaprasadam is also the other Amrita of Krishna. We should because we're in Vaidhi Bhakti. But Gurudev explained on another occasion that if Sri Sukadeva Goswami will get Mahaprasadam, he will take it and go, oh, Mahaprasadam. <laughs> cover his body with it. Because he wants to cover his body with Krishna. That's why when Nityananda Prabhu threw the right Mahaprasadam and it landed on the leg of Advaita Acharya, he jumped up and danced in ecstasy because he was touched by Krishna's, by Krishna himself. So, in all places, in all times, in all circumstances, trying to see that what? That I was there before the creation? Whatever you see now is only me. And at the creation, there'll only be me. Then next, whatever you see, and you think that it has some value, if it doesn't have any relationship to me, then you should know that it's my illusory energy. In other words, you're in Maya. And know it to be just like a shadow, reflection in the darkness. And then, what's the third one? I forgot. It's the third. Huh? Oh, thank you. Just as the material elements enter into the cosmos, but at the same time do not enter into it, Similarly, I enter into all of material existence, but at the same time, I don't. I remain independent. So now that we have the first three, now what do I do about it? The fourth slogan tells us. A person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth should certainly search for it up to this. Up to what? In all circumstances, in all space and in all time, both directly and indirectly. Uh, in another verse of the Bhagavatam, it's stated that because Krishna is always and everywhere, he's eternal and he's everywhere, one should glorify him eternally and everywhere, in all kinds, places and circumstances. And then, after this extremely long purport of Srila Prabhupada, he gives such long purport to these verses. Then Krishna concludes, O Brahma, just follow this conclusion by fixed concentration of mind, or as Krishna says in the Gita, from whatever and wherever the mind may wander due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one can certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. So, just follow this conclusion by fixed concentration of mind. And then if you do that, because Brahma's original prayer, when Krishna said, what, what do you want? Any benediction? Brahma said, the benediction I would like is that when I'm doing this very arduous and at the same time glorifiable task of creating this universe, please don't let me have the false ego that I'm doing it. And then if I don't have the false ego, then anybody who's in the creation, whatever he sees, he'll be able to see you there. On the taste of water, on the ability in man. 
The sun and the moon are nothing but the eyes of the Lord, the Lord's universal form. So then Krishna is concluding, to follow this conclusion, by fixed concentration, and if you do that, then no pride will disturb you, neither in the partial nor the final destruction. That is, after Brahma's day, there's a partial destruction. It's pretty, it's pretty big destruction. Because there's 36,000 years of, of uh, fire, and then 36,000 years of flood. And Prabhupada writes in the purport there, in the third canto, that we've been through this so many times, but still we forget it and we think that I'm the enjoyer, I'm the center of the universe, I've just done this great thing, I've just said this great sentence, not only have I said this great sentence, but I've said it in the sweetest way imaginable. And then we're nowhere. So we do nothing, we think that we're great. And Brahma had to do a great thing, and he's praying to be free from pride. Gurudev said, if you, if you, um, suppose I give a good class, and then everybody says, everybody comes to me and says, wow, you gave such a great class. Here's a hundred dollars. Donation. And I think, yeah, that was a pretty good class. How can I use that hundred dollars? But rather, as soon as I think that, I have nothing. I'm lost. I'm in the material world. So how should I think? If there was anything good about the class, it's my Gurudev who gave the class. I can think it intellectually, but Gurudev thinks it factually about his Gurudev. My Gurudev gave the class, in fact, it's his knowledge, it's not my knowledge. Some of you say, well, it's your knowledge because you spoke it. It's not my knowledge because I haven't realized it. It's just like a combination of thousands of syllables combined together. But, if, but I don't know anything what it means. Because I don't even know what it means that it rains. Or anything. Or that Radha and Krishna are walking hand in hand. Or that um, we were in the Tatastha Shakti. And then at some point before time, I decided to leave Krishna and come to this material world. And it was just like, you can compare it with uh, mustard seeds falling on the edge of a knife. And some mustard seeds fall this way and some mustard seeds fall that way. So some of us looked up there and went to Goloka Vrindavan and some of us came here to Maya and still it was my independence but still it seems like it's by chance I don't know what what I'm talking about even if I'm giving a class so it's not really my knowledge in fact Guru Gurudev told me once that you'll never understand anything about the Tatastha Shakti and the independence and the coming to the material world and the time and beyond time as long as you think the Sunday as long as you think you're a lady or a lad. <laughs> so, I should think, the money belongs to my Gurudev, it's my Gurudev's knowledge, so I turn everything over to him and then I can advance. So, was that the end of the verse? Yeah, so then, pride will not disturb you, neither in the partial nor the final devastation. So I'll ask if there's any comments or questions. And these verses, which are in the um, second chapter, second canto, ninth chapter, in, in the 30s, uh, is also quoted in the first, first of Adi Lila. I think it's the first, first or second chapter. These verses are also quoted by Shri Krishna Kavraj Goswami and explained further. Do any comments or questions? Hi, uh, Wednesday morning. But I also want to give a, a talk sometime, if Raghunath Prabhu would kindly arrange it, on a non-somebody else's class time, when it's not a class time, maybe in the afternoon, about... Um, 3 o'clock is open because um, we left 3 o'clock, if you'd like to speak to 3 on, on one of the days, of course, I wanted to speak about distributing books and preaching. That was a request of... Um, Ramakanta Prabhu, who's one of the devotees on the Goloka Book Distribution Party. Are we doing art? Huh? Huh? Okay, so one of the days that also. Is there any art class? Hmm? Art, art, art class? Oh yeah, what about a slideshow of the art? 
and to discuss the art of Prabhupada and Gurudev some someday in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Therefore, we're in Maya. Therefore, it's a result of the influence of the illusory energy. By the mercy of Guru. When we get mercy, then I can know what is Krishna and what is Maya. Gurudev said, there's only two things you have to know. Prabhupada said, there's only two things you have to know. What is Krishna and what is Maya? And he said, if Krishna is so nice, that if you surrender to him, you'll also know what is Maya. And you know that verse that when you're eating, uh, you don't have to get a certificate that now I'm full, but you know it. So, when we're Krishna conscious, then uh, we become detached, we become satisfied and happy, nourished and bhakti, and get realization of Krishna. But when we're in Maya, it's very difficult to know anything. So we're very lucky that Gurudev is here. Thank you.